I'm currently cycling on the National Cycle Network Route 4, approaching Ponty Prive. At the moment I'm cycling legally on the pavement, approaching a traffic light junction. As I approach the junction, I am told that I have to dismount because the crossings here are for pedestrians only. Even though traffic is stopped, these crossings only work when the button is pressed, meaning if you join in the middle of a traffic light cycle, you have to wait a long time to cross. I sped up the video here, but it takes me 30 seconds for a green light. I can now walk across the crossing, even though there is a sign showing this is part of the National Cycle Network. The next crossing only takes 10 seconds for a green light. I can now get back onto my bike, but setting off is very difficult because I have to start up again on a very steep hill and then go through two 90 degree turns. This was clearly designed for people walking and not people cycling. This section actually works quite well. It's a quiet street with no through traffic whatsoever. However, the road is now finished and I now have to dismount in order to cross the gyrator again because the crossings are only for pedestrians. This is despite signposts showing this is part of a national cycle network. I sped up the video again, this crossing took me 25 seconds to complete. The next crossing takes longer because a green light for pedestrians means stopping motor traffic on an otherwise clear bit of road. It takes 45 seconds for a green light here. Now, despite the sign over there saying this is part of the National Cycle Network, this is a pavement I cannot cycle on, meaning I have to walk with my bike for a long section. There's four lanes of traffic here, space is very much available, but the decision is that motor traffic needs it more. Another sign for the National Cycle Network, but still no legal way of cycling. The gap here between the bus stop and the barriers is barely wide enough for my handlebars. There's no, there's no lack of space here. There's four lanes of motor traffic, but the decision is that we need it for motor traffic and not for people. Thank you. I also come into lots of conflict with people waiting for buses, even though I'm only walking with my bike. Still the National Cycle Network, but still no cycling. I can now cycle again, but instead of being able to proceed straight ahead, I have to go through a car park, which brings me into conflict with motor vehicles and pedestrians. There would be ample room for a cycle contraflow, but this has not been considered at all whatsoever. This car is trying to reverse, but because this is the only way through for pedestrians, it's struggling to get through. I'm also struggling to get past it.
This is the main shopping area of Pontypridd. It's currently pedestrianised, but outside the hours of this, it's extremely unpleasant for people shopping, and access for people cycling is very poor. There is plenty of on-street parking for motor vehicles, but none whatsoever for people cycling to the shops. I'm now approaching the park, but next to the sign showing the extent of the National Cycle Network in the area, I am once again told to dismount. The next 500 metres of National Cycle Network is one large dismount section. With infrastructure like this, it is little surprise that only 0.5% of trips to work by bicycle, the third worst performing council in the country. This is despite around 25% of Rhonda Cannon Taff residents not having access to a car. With the Active Travel Act in force, will Rhonda Cannon Taff Council start to provide for people cycling, or continue to only provide for motor transport over a quarter of its residents don't have access to?